And here we are again, guys. Welcome back to Go Space Program. This is the Easter Egg Hunter Episode 2. My name is Chris, and we're going to find a lot of Easter eggs on Kevin. Woof, let me tell you. Yes, that's what we're doing in this episode. Easter egg finding with this single ship. This is the SSTO. Um, after we, we're done with this, we're actually going to dock this to the, the actual station that we have, the carrier ship. And let me go ahead and address the names. Now, a lot of you guys in the last episode suggested a lot of names. Many names, some hilarious, some eh, not not so hilarious, but... Oh, car going past. Uh, I, should, I should close my door. Uh, anyway, so several names and uh, really, really funny ones. So I'll give you an example of one that I think um, we're probably going to go with. The Explorer, I think, is the best name. Some other of you guys suggested uh, USS Seeker. That's pretty good. Others was like the Lone Seeker. I like that as well. But just to make it funny and sort of relate to what this whole carrier ship is, the Explorer is pretty good. So I think USS Explorer is the final name. I hope you, I hope you guys are happy with that. And that was named by two guys. They probably copied each other. I know AFK Gaming. No. Uh, Robert Salu was the first guy to set it, and then AFK Gaming was the second, so... I don't know, you guys battled it out or something. Yeah, one of you guys named it, <laughs> was the first one to name it. So, yeah, Explorer, I'm, I'm, it's pretty good. I'm happy with it, yeah. And uh, this ship doesn't have a name, this aircraft thing. Don't bother naming it, okay? <laughs> we have enough, I had a few problems with the names. You guys commented too much. Why are you so many comments? Like, I only get like 12 comments, usually, in some videos, and then... All of a sudden, like, it's 100 and something just because all of you guys want to name the ship. <laughs> wow. All right, well, that's a problem. Now, what we're doing here... Now, this thing you see on the screen right now is a monolith, okay? It's just a, a weird-shaped thing that has squad written on it and with the picture of a monkey. That's it. Now, there are five monoliths in Kerbin. Now, I did say I was going to visit every single East Egg. I'll take that back. I'm not going to visit all the monoliths. I mean, the monoliths, they all look the same. They're not interesting. Why put so much effort in finding something that's that looks exactly the same like it did before with another monolith? So I'm not going to bother. And some, let me tell you, are just ridiculous to find. Even with coordinates, they are difficult to find, I promise you. Now, the resource that I'm using to find these Easter eggs is the KSP maps. I'll include a uh, link in the description. So... It's just a web page, and uh, you can pretty much just click on the Easter eggs that are presented. So it's got like little icons. You click on it, it gives you coordinates, so then you can use you can use maybe Hyper Edit or something to take you there, or you can actually manually find it. I did a bit of both, you know, manually found it. In this case, like I know where all the Easter eggs are. That's why I'm like, showing you with this ship instead of using Hyper Edit and stuff. That's cheating, right? No cheats in this. So that's good. Uh, this here, uh, if you may have noticed, I'm actually naming, like I go around with the names of the East Egg. So we already showed like the monolith and we had one out of five in there. And then the uh, the MK1 pod memorial. I'm not really sure about the MK1 pod actually. See like, there's no real explanation as to why there isn't a memorial for it. I looked online and couldn't find anything on it. Do you guys know anything about that? Uh, but there could be a link between the memorial and... This MK1 pod here. Hmm. See, the the idea is this MK1 pod here is actually like a scorched. It's been burnt. It's, it's damaged, right? And so that could link up to the memorial that was done right outside KSC. You see, so maybe these two link. And there we go. Scorched MK1 pod, liquid fuel tank, and LV245 rocket. Blah blah blah. Okay. <laughs> you guys get the point. The fuel tank looks pretty good, and the rocket engine. That's not scorched. So, hmm, how do they relate? And you know what? That wouldn't look very good if you attached the that fuel tank there under the MK1 pod. That wouldn't look very good. In fact, the MK1 pod, that one, is actually different. It's, they don't, like, the one that's actually inside the SPH and VAB when you're building is a different, a completely different type of pod. So, I don't know, they changed the naming scheme or something? I don't know, weird. Anyway, the next one that we are about to visit is probably one of the best in Kerbin. Oh, uh, bike going past. <laughs> Damn, I really do need to close this door. 
So this one here is actually the pyramid. Yes. Oh, I forgot to mention. Spoiler alert. There are spoilers in this. If you don't, it will be late, eh? Uh, if you guys don't want to see like the Easter eggs or spoilers or anything, just don't watch this. The Easter eggs is what we are going to find. If you don't want to know about it, don't watch this. Too bad. Okay. So yes, um, we kind of overshot it here with uh, we the finding the Easter eggs. That's not good. But don't worry, I do a bit of a, a time skip and skip ahead. Uh, and by the way, a lot of you guys want the house file I built once. So I, I did build a house and I was shooting at it in the past couple episodes with missiles. So I'll make an episode with the house file and with uh, smaller houses. So I'll have different houses that you guys can shoot at, different size. So that, that should be good. Oh, someone's walking past. Okay. Now, with this series, a lot of you guys were saying, you know, do a space battle and other types of things. We're kind of going to do that. Kind of. Now, depending on the Easter egg, there is a story behind it. Now, the only Easter egg in Kerbin that actually has a story behind it that I've created myself is the pyramids. And that's what we are about to visit right now. And at the moment, we're just going straight down because the Easter egg is actually right in front of us all the way down on the ground. It's not flying, in case you're wondering. Although that would be pretty interesting, like a flying Easter egg. Then you could land on it. That'd be good. Mm. And unfortunately, um, after like looking up all the Easter eggs, and uh, I, I assume that there were more than what I heard about, but there aren't that many Easter eggs overall. Uh, some moons don't have an easter egg. In fact, Eve does not have an easter egg. I thought I had one or at least two. But uh, no, nothing. Unless we haven't found it. But really, no one is aware of it. So that's not good. And at the very least, like, can't the... Like, say the KSP team do add another easter egg. It would be good if they can kind of give us a hint as to... Like, telling us, okay, there is an easter egg that has just been added. It is within... Uh, a desert type of terrain. Okay, there we go. That kind of hint, right? Not telling us the exact coordinates. Or maybe, like, you could tell us the coordinates. That'd be pretty useful. No, there wouldn't be an Easter egg then if they told us that. Anyways, look at that. A, a desert temple. Yep. So, uh, pretty soon, you will got, you guys will see, like, a... Kind of like a cinematic shot of me going to Duna. Uh, it's related to the desert temple. And each time I find like a particular Easter egg that is related, you will see uh, me doing the cinematic. And eventually I'll cut out all the cinematics and put them into one video so you guys can understand what I'm doing here. It might be a little bit complex. complex. Um, so that's like an old fashioned Kerbal. He's, he's a bit of an angle. In fact, you'd be surprised, but there are, that is a bit of an exaggeration, a secret. This is part of the story. So there are coordinates around here. And uh, the coordinates, actually lead to Duna, on a specific spot on Duna. That's where the coordinates lead. So, here we go. Cinematic prepare for the amazing cinematic. So, this guy here is... I don't know who he is. Let's just call him... Let's name a Kerbal. Name a Kerbal. Uh, I will call him Easter Egg Bunny. What? Easter Bunny. Yeah, that's a good one. Nice cinematic. Look at that. I changed the contrast a little bit. And looks looks pretty good. Yeah, not a bad design, right? It did reach uh, reaches it goes to Duna. It's quite simple. So I don't know. If you guys want that design too, tell me. I'm giving away too many designs, aren't I? Design this, design that. Oh, there's Duna. That was quick. <laughs> yeah, and when, once I cut down, cut all these cinematics out of the episodes, I'll like have like peaceful music. I won't be talking over it, but I'm just talking for now, just so you guys can get a feel for what we're trying to do here. And there we go. Bit of a lag spike, all that terrain generation. Yes, so there we go, that's the end of that cinematic. You get to see what it is soon enough. The next Easter egg, oh, oh, what happened with the ship? Yes, uh, I like the design here, uh, but the turn rating is, is, well, the pitch is like crazy. Let me tell you, Oof. yeah, it is pretty bad. Uh, so let me, uh, let me get on the web for a second. Uh, Doing a lot of things, actually. Uh, if you're wondering why the videos have been kind of delayed lately, for like a couple of days, it's because I have important things going on in my life. That's always top priority, because if my life fails, then YouTube fails, just let you guys know. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there it is. You can see like a little dot down there on the ground. Yes, that's the Easter egg. 
and some of you may not may know what this is. So I advise you to compare this. This is the inland KSC with the updated KSC. Look at that. Look at the difference. That's how the old KSC looked. And not exactly in that position. The spacing looks a little bit weird. And I do remember there was a runway here. I, they must have taken it out because of the terrain generation. In fact, uh, there was a big valley all around this once before in an older update. And this was more hidden, but now it's kind of exposed on one side. Like right behind us, it's it's open area. There's no mountains. So yeah, it's just me. This is just me being silly, flying around, trying to stall the aircraft. So that's fun. <laughs> I was doing a bit of reading recently, and found out that uh, when planes were being made, more specifically monoplanes, not biplanes, monoplanes, uh, when an airplane pilot was coming from a, uh, how do I say this, a dive. So it just came from a dive. Sometimes the airplane wings would just break off. That would have spelled death. And I don't know if they had a evacuation type of seat. No, oh, that's another monolith right there. Monolith. Ooh. I don't know why the monolith was placed like right next to this in the NKC. Is there any point in having two Easter eggs right next to each other? Is there? I don't know what the reason is for. Unless they don't consider the monolith an Easter egg. Huh? They probably do, but it's just not a very good one. It's not fancy. It's not unique. It's just the same thing. And it is all around the Kerbal system. So, yes. Uh, th yep, yep. <laughs> I'm still flying this thing and it's smashed. That's just me being silly. At least it works, but right? I mean, not normally. It's not every day you have a craft that smashes and still works. Let me tell you, that's a rare thing. But don't worry. It works fine. Kind of. <laughs> Alright, oh, another car going past. That's great. Uh, next episode, we will be going to the moon. So, we'll go there. Uh, there are a couple of Easter eggs there. I won't spoil them yet. Uh, but mostly the same type of Easter egg, which is an issue. So, maybe we will go to Minimus as well. I believe there was one, one Easter egg there. So, like, not that many. There should be more. Come on, KSP team. Do your thing. <laughs> It'd be funny if there's a mod out there to just download easter eggs. That'd be funny. <laughs> uh, the things we have to do. And uh, that's how it looks from above. So it's quite a, quite an obvious thing in the terrain. I don't know. It looks like a K or something. I don't know. Interesting, right? Why would they shape it like that? Anyway, down at the North Pole. <laughs> flying around. And I did not know there were so many Christmas trees here. In fact, I did not know there were any Christmas trees. That's pretty good. They look quite quite fancy and very detailed, eh? All we need is a few Christmas lights and that's a done deal. Hmm. So this final Easter egg on Kerbin. And as I did mention, I'm not finding... I'm not going to go find the monoliths because they're just not fancy. It's what we've already seen in some really ridiculous places. I found one of these monoliths. Literally, it was like one one sixth of it was exposed. You could actually see. And the rest of it was covered by land. It's just ridiculous, like really difficult to find. I'm not complaining about the KSP team, I'm just complaining about the how bad it is to find. So I wouldn't bother finding these monoliths. But again, if you want to find them yourself, if for whatever reason, uh, there is a link in the description for the Kerbal maps, so you can go do that. Even then, you'll struggle finding it, even with the coordinates. This Easter egg would have to be kind of related to the cinematic story that we are doing. It's a UFO. So that's a big hint right there. A UFO on Kerbin. Hmm. So try to imagine... Uh, pff, what's that? Wing brakes. Let me tell you. This ship, this aircraft, broke so many times when I was flying it. It's all my fault, but there we go. A crash flying saucer on the northern ice cap. Yay! Pretty cool. Not uh, very detailed. It's a little bit circular, spherical. Uh, I actually tried to fly this thing. Like I, the, the UFO, I went up to it and I pressed F like you normally would to enter a cockpit, assuming there was a cockpit or something with the UFO. That would have been amazing to fly a UFO like that. <laughs> now nah, I'm asking for too much, actually. It is a little bit too much to ask for a UFO smash like that to be able to fly. That's not good. That'd, that'd break the game. Not good at all. 
Ah, that'd be awesome, but not good, but awesome. And turn on the lights, say the thing in detail. So again, our next episode, we visit the moon. Uh, of course, we are actually going to use a carrier ship. In this episode, there was no need to use carrier ship because we have this this single plane that was able to take us everywhere. Uh, so yeah, it's an SSTO utilizing the Rapier engines. So yeah, so there we go. There's the coordinates for you guys to see. So I really do hope you guys enjoyed. Any suggestions are, are great. And uh, see you next time. Take care. Mm-hmm.